Now it's time to find out how to bunk your science. <laughs> classic way to engage people in science is to use the big bang uh, approach of the more reactive metals and the big explosions and things that basically require the entire front row of the classroom to wear goggles and, and cover their ears. Ah! What we've always tried to do is the theoretical equivalent of that sort of demonstration. Of course, that's not what actually happens. You don't get hit in the back of the head by a piece of cardboard. Punk science demonstration doesn't necessarily give you all the facts. It's just an insight. It's just an icebreaker, if you like. So what you're going to do is you're going to eat some fruit, some lovely fruit. It's good for healthy living, but it also might be able to uh, produce some serotonin in there. Sometimes these concepts could be a very dry, flat, two-dimensional diagram. So we're trying to turn that into a live, three-dimensional, participatory kickabout of the idea. You can pick any subject matter. You can look through the whole myriad of everything that's there in contemporary science and you can do a demonstration that relates to it. It's just your interpretation of it. Give her a prop. Show us, show us your mother's sense of fun. The thing about our shows is our props are absolutely rubbish and that's uh, deliberate. Maybe, We've always used yes. rubbish props. So that's, that's a nappy. <laughs> the extra imagination leap you have to make to see a bag of balls and some gaffer tape and uh, a stick as some complicated particle physics demonstration really helps, I think, in the visualisation process. Alex has enormous hands! Show him your hands, Alex! Show him! Don't disagree with me! Oh, don't hit me! You don't have to be a performer to do our sorts of demonstrations. You just need to give a structure to the audience or your class and then they go away and do it and perform it. You just have to deliver it to them in a way that they know what they're doing and that they can get up and bring back their performance. Really the setup is to involve the volunteer but not ask them to invent anything or improvise anything on the spot. And I think there are a lot of parallels with pantomime and the kind of things volunteers might be got up to do in a pantomime, except that ours are more science-based than the fairy tale. There are always going to be shy kids in, in any group, so what we tend to do is, for, at the start of the show, we do a demonstration or something or a voting uh, aspect of the show where everyone has to take part. Now, we need to establish exactly how healthy you guys are. We have a scale of zero to ten. Oh, ah. It's sort of a hidden warm-up, isn't it? Sort of a exactly. slightly concealed warm-up, uh, loosening up of the audience, uh, hidden as part of the show. Yeah. You see them as an audience looking at each other, waving their arms in the air like they've been instructed to do, but looking around and laughing at their friends as they're doing it. So it's really sort of saying, it's okay to look stupid in this. We definitely play on the potential for embarrassment, especially for a teenage crowd. Deep down they love it and I think the, the selective breeding thing shows that they very quickly got on board because once you set up that you're going to be pairing people off, husband and wife, they're going to be having offspring. Come over here and stand next to your husband. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes. And then they very quickly uh, latch onto that idea and go with it. Let's fast forward through the years. You're now in your 50s, so are you. You've got loads of kids. Here they are. You, you, you and you. Stand up please, you four. Say hello to your mum and dad. Hello. And some of them play along hilariously, others are so ashamed and embarrassed that the rest of them find it hilarious. We're going to find a perfect mate for you, with maybe with another desirable trait. And what do we have here? It's you, stand up please. Yes. <laughs> and I don't think the damage is lasting, but it really makes for an enjoyable and memorable demo. And more importantly, it's something that the kids will talk about afterwards. People will remember the, when they had to do something ridiculous. And they'll remember why they had to do something ridiculous. And then that can be used as a jumping off point. But obviously it needs to be bolstered by a, a scientific explanation. And the follow on information they'll get once the topic is explored in more detail. Even if you're thinking, well, science isn't for me. I'm not particularly interested in science. You do this high energy mad experiment and you think, oh, actually, maybe it is all right. I think the important thing to remember is our demonstrations tend to be between three and five minutes. You don't have to do that in class. You can make this last an entire lesson. Now, we all know about the Big Bang, 
it's basically the start of the universe. Big Bang does exactly what it says on the tin. There's a big explosion and all the matter in the universe is created. So it starts Everything. expanding, it starts expanding and it carries on expanding. So you can take any area of contemporary science and you can elaborate all the way through it. You can do several demonstrations. And that's something we've done. We've, we've, we've actually given uh, students uh, different stages of experiments to go and do and they've displayed each stage. Okay, this group over here, you're doing something based on slightly different type of research. In the Healthy Living demo, where we're trying to mention lots of different bits of research that have uh, touched on a particular subject, in that case, uh, how to be healthy, uh, to cover as many things as possible, to bring in as many uh, different aspects as possible, uh, we like to apply them to lots of different volunteers and then uh, ramp up a kind of organised hysteria that then builds to a climax point and you get in, in amongst all the fun activities like eating and exercising and laughing and running around uh, on top of that you get a sort of climax of hysteria and then actually you get people's attention for the, the minute or so where you try and summarise what you've been trying to do and what the implications might have been. Let's find out what the results were. We're not going to get the results because there's not enough time for them to digest the food, for it to go through the body. So we're never going to see the results in the time frame that we've got in our show. I think it's probably clear to say that our uh, experiment wasn't particularly successful. So all we're doing is providing a bit of an insight to some of the aspects of how a, a clinical trial or an experiment might work. This bungee cord here is going to represent the gravity in the universe. The structure has to be there. You have to create the structure. You have to say, I want this, this and this, and this end result from it. Just for the purposes of the demo, it has to be a self-contained logic. And then you can add the uh, sort of the element of surprise, or you can play around with the audience's expectation of what's going to happen. So you say, this time, we're going to have a weak force of gravity represented by a cardboard clip. And having seen what you did in the first demonstration, they're already expecting this to break and for a disaster to ensue. I think that's a very important uh, aspect of structure. You don't have to come up with all the solutions because it's quite nice to just get your class to go away and come up with the, the creative element of it. <laughs>